So literary archives can be diasporic in the sense that they are split between authors' papers, collections in libraries and archives, um, private collections, but also literature is a commercial product, and as such, it is also preserved in publishing archives. And all of this, this um, the diaspora, the, the dispersal of authors' papers and papers relating to literature in business archives, um, generates issues relating to ownership, access, and location. The only lost archive is one that's been broken. If the archive stays together and if it's used, um, it isn't lost at all. It's, you know, it, 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 it still continues to exist. And it's just that researchers may need to find their way to it. Um, although we're finding more and more creative ways for that to happen. Ideas are not bound in, in, in specific places. Um, and uh, writers have, over the centuries, as we have also heard uh, from Yale and, and elsewhere, uh, writers themselves have been uh, immigrants, they have been immigrants, they have been wanderers, travelers. Uh, well, the internet has completely changed the rules of the game, uh, although, as Peter Robinson has shown us, it's not perfect. <coughs> but. Uh, by, it has shown the rules by creating an overwhelmingly transnational virtual reality. And this means that when it comes to, to copyright or to discussing uh, other uh, major issues concerning uh, literary archives around the world, then the answers to the challenges, they cannot be purely national. They must have a strong universal dimension. Still more recently, we've begun to develop what we call a hub-and-spoke model of acquisition, whereby major acquisitions act as hub collections, which prepare the ground for and attract additional satellite acquisitions, which, so to speak, spin off around that, um, that main hub. The idea of a partnership actually appealed to the donors. I think, uh, had we been trying to acquire this exclusively, I don't think we would have had the success in actually approaching uh, donors and having their cooperation. The notion of the partnership and the shared acquisition was, uh, was very important and attractive to, to people. I think one of the interesting things that's come out of this and was actually written into the agreement that we had with our, our colleagues in Marbach is that this would this would form not just the basis of a joint physical um, ownership of the materials, but all sorts of other types of collaboration. So uh, we will work together on a, on a website um, relating to, to, to these materials. We're talking about, well, in fact, we are cooperating on exhibitions in 2014, um, commemorating the beginning of uh, the First World War. And... Uh, we envisage exchanges between the, the two institutions and working together on various scholarly projects. So it spawned, if you like, uh, exciting possibilities uh, beyond just uh, saving these, these papers from disappearing from, from public, public view.